We are in the second week of February here in 2024. This is typically not when I would actually graft. The best time to graft is going to be at bud break for your fig trees. But I wanted to put a video out there. A lot of you have asked for a tutorial video. I did one a few years back, but I'd like to do a refresher here and just a basic method that I use that gives me near 100% success rate on grafting fig scions. Really easy to do, especially if you're in a backyard culture. Diversity and grafting your trees is a good idea. It doesn't take up that space. As I've mentioned in many videos, I love grafting. I do a lot of that on fig trees. Uh, it gives you a longer harvest window because different varieties will ripen up at different times. When it comes down to grafting, there are a few variables that are crucial. Timing is one. I mentioned it. You really want to graft when it's time. You graft too early and your scion will just dry out on you and it won't take. So you want to graft when the tree is receptive, when it's ready to push, push growth. That's typically end of February, early March here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. If you're in a similar climate, just watch your trees and look for those first signs of the buds starting to swell and pushing growth. That tells you it's ready for grafting. So second success factor, pretty obvious, is going to be your technique. You have to have good technique in order to ensure that the graft is going to take. And there are many different approaches and different, different styles depending on what kind of wood you're working with. Today we're going to be using a tool. So I use the tool because it ensures high success and you're not going to hurt yourself. You know, you could use a, a utility knife, a lot of people do, for their grafts, but you need to be pretty skilled with that knife so you don't cut yourself, hurt yourself, or damage the wood. You have to have quite a bit of experience to get good if you're going to just freehand it with a knife. With this tool, you can just be a beginner, never have grafted before, and have success. So that's, I want you to be successful like I've been with grafting, so I'm sharing today with you what I use. Of course you can use whatever tool you want, but this is a good one for kind of a fuss-free approach. Okay, the third thing is the materials you use to graft. We're going to need grafting tape. There's lots of different companies out there that sell grafting tape. You can get Parafilm M, but what I have found grafting over the last six years is buddy tape far surpasses any of those tapes. It ensures much better moisture retention. It's easier to work with and I just have had phenomenal results with it. It is pricier and it's hard to get, but if you're going to go through, you know, the effort of grafting, um, I highly suggest getting the buddy tapes so that you, you have the right materials for the job. Beyond the grafting tape, you will see that I will use electric tape. Electric tape is fantastic for ensuring that the cambium contact is not lost by weather, by birds, you know, wind knocking it around. Um, as soon as that cambium contact again is lost, that scion is not going to work. It's going to fail. So the electric tape is just something I do to ensure that nothing happens to that scion on rootstock. They remain in contact. So you will see me use, use that. I think it's a necessary ingredient for success. Another thing that I will use is a cup of water. Chances are if you're grafting, you're getting your wood from another place and you've stored it in a refrigerator for some time, a crisper drawer to keep it viable, you want to rehydrate that cutting before you graft it on. So always a good idea to cut the bottom of your scion and stick it in some water, you know, for 15 minutes, an hour. For this video, I'm not purchasing scions. I actually have some scions that I want to remove from another tree and put it onto a different tree. So because they're fresh, hydration isn't so important to have it soak, but I still, when I harvest that scion, don't want it to dry out. As soon as I cut that scion off my tree, I'm gonna plunge it in some water to keep it from drying out, keeping it viable, as fresh as possible. The last consideration really is your rootstock tree. And there's a few things that go into that. I have found over the course of the past few years that it is best to dedicate one fig tree in your yard to grafting. I have tried grafting onto trees and allowing rootstock to grow alongside the grafts and what will inevitably happen is all the energy is going to go into the rootstock branches. 
it will not support those grafts. You have to essentially force that tree to support the grafts. And the only way to do that is to cut all of the rootstock branches off. So it has no choice but to support those grafts. Your grafts will still take if you have rootstock in the mix, but you'll, you'll notice that they won't do a whole lot. It's actually why I'm going to be grafting today is because I had that situation going where I grafted onto a tree, left the rootstock branches, and saw that my grafts didn't do much. And on the other hand, I saw how well they did when I left no rootstock. So to correct that situation, I have an LSU purple fig tree in ground in my yard. It's a variety of fig that's not all that appealing to me, kind of single noted sugar fig, which I don't care for. So I'm not losing anything by not allowing that tree to grow its own fruit. It will serve as my new host tree to about six different varieties of figs that I do want to grow. Side note on rootstock. Any fig tree variety is going to be great rootstock as long as it's vigorous in your climate. There are certain fig varieties that are known to be very, you know, aggressive and good growers in our climate. Uh, brown turkeys one, you know, Kadota, Panache tiger. Any fig variety that you would find at a nursery is probably going to be just fine. Varieties that you wouldn't want to use as rootstock are ones that just don't grow well. They don't do well on their own roots. Black Madeira is one. Something that's super slow growing and isn't vigorous is not going to do well to support a bunch of grafts. Just common sense. So, you know, don't uh, overthink it on selecting your rootstock. Just find something that grows well. Again, for your climate. It doesn't have to fruit well, just has to put on a lot of vegetative growth. Something where the roots are doing well in your soil conditions. So quickly running down the materials we're going to be using today. So for obvious reasons, you want to tag the tree that you'll be grafting onto. You don't want to mix up varieties or not know what you have. So important to have a label there. Just have some garden twine so it can actually affix it to the branch. Some basic bypass pruners are going to allow you to cut the ends off. Right, so for that nice clean cut before you start your grafting. This is the buddy tape that we're going to use. It's just grafting tape here. It comes in a roll and it has perforated sheets. Which makes it a little easier. Basic electric tape. A cup of RO water here. And here's our grafting tool. I purchased mine online. I think they're in the neighborhood of around $20 to $30. Uh, they do have change out blades as they will dull on you eventually, but I've, you know, used this for hundreds of grafts and not had to change the blade, so they last a long time. But you can see as I squeeze the handles here, there's a prong that comes down and it's shaped into a V pattern. And it's going to plunge down and cut that into your scion, as well as your rootstock. So you'll essentially put this around the branch and then cut that pattern in. So your rootstock will have kind of an apex and then your scion will look like a saddle and you'll seat it right on there. So this tool, you know, you don't have to worry about knives or anything like that. You're just worrying about lining it up and making sure your rootstock and scion match. That's all that you have to consider with this tool. Because I'm grafting a little early, I am going to wrap the scion in some foil just to keep the weather off of it, the wind, the rain. Keep it a little bit more insulated. So let's just take a quick look at the rootstock tree. This is what I left with pruning. You can see that I took out some large branches here of rootstock. And I just left these arching branches down low. You know, pencil thickness, maybe a little thicker. And that's more or less what you want with this tool. You can't use the tool if you have a super thick branch. Something that's nickel thickness is not going to work. It won't fit inside that tool. So ideally, when you are grafting, you want your rootstock to have thinner, pencil-like thickness branches. That's, that's what you want to leave behind. And you ideally want them 
fairly low on the tree. You know, anywhere between two and three feet from the ground is ideal. The lower those grafts are, the more wood you'll have within picking reach once those start growing out for you. So you can see with this tree, it is just starting, just starting to swell the buds a bit on these branches. Not all my trees are in this state, but this variety seems to be waking up just slightly earlier and I'm already seeing that swelling. So I think this one is ready to go to be grafted onto. And that's kind of the sign you're looking for is you're starting to see these green buds develop and get a little bit bigger. You can see that on this branch as well. There's a bud that's swelling right on the side here. I'm actually seeing that on all the tips of this tree. So again, going back to timing, that's what you're looking for, just the early signs of swelling of the buds before it actually starts pushing growth. For a fig graft, you do not need a very large scion. In fact, you shouldn't get a really large scion and stick on. Number one, it's putting too much weight on that graft point, which can cause it to crack. Number two, there's just no need. As long as you have one bud, that's usually enough for the graft to take off. I like to do two to three nodes on my scion just for better odds, and that's about it. And you can see, being that this is a tip, cutting there's many many buds coming out of the tip so we really don't need a large scion here I'm going to slip this tool in and we want to essentially center this v-cut right on the space in between two buds in the middle and all I'm going to do is squeeze and that's it always like to do two graphs of the same variety in case one fails so we're gonna do the same thing on this one. We just made a flush cut to the top. And there we go with our second V cut there. So here, I'm just gonna take another diameter cutting piece of this one. Just in case I need something a little thinner to work with. It's always good to have variety, different thicknesses. So we're back over at the LSU Purple, and what I'm doing now is checking the tree to see what would best match with the scion. We want them to match up perfect so that when we cut this rootstock to seat this on here, it perfectly matches up. And I'm seeing this branch to be the best match here. So that's the one we will use for the graft. Before we actually graft, we want to use this buddy tape to wrap or scion. So I'm going to pull and stretch, pull and stretch, rotate the cutting as I'm doing this. And this ensures that the wood does not dry out during the process. All right, so I usually like to do two wraps, two strips of this tape. It's perforated for you. And we're just going to leave the graft point, of course, open for now. And then once we seat this, we'll put some more tape around it. So similar concept when you're removing the wood for the scion, as you are when you're taking the scion wood, you want to just line up your tool in between two buds so that it's centered on the branch. Then you're just, just gonna push it through. All right, when you seat this on, it should be tight. It shouldn't wiggle too much or fall off. It should be perfectly matched up, no overlap on the sides. We want that bark to line up so that the nutrient exchange can happen there. So from here, we'll just be using another strip of this buddy tape. Start just below the graft and wrap it up to where the other strip was so you don't have any gapping. And wrap a few inches below as well. This grafting tape not only avoids the air gaps in your scion wood, but it also allows us to put the electric tape on to really tighten this graft together for that good contact, for better healing. 
So we want to make sure we have a good layer because the electric tape should come off easily in a few months when that graft heals. If we were to put it directly on the bark, it would damage the bark. So for the electric tape, again, I'm going to start just below the graft. I'm going to push down at the same time as I'm wrapping so that it doesn't move out of place. To keep that adhesion on the tape, prevent, you know, rain from messing with it, I will also put on some more grafting tape on top. As I mentioned, you definitely want to label this. So I've got my CLBC sign here so I know what variety this is. I'll just tie that down. And then again, I mentioned because, you know, this is not maybe the most ideal time, I do want to keep the rain off of it and the weather off of it. So I'm just going to wrap it with some foil here just to protect it a little more. If we had freezing temperatures, some kind of freak weather storm comes through, a nice thing that I have found to protect your scions is remove the foil and put some of that pipe insulation over the graft and that will protect it from freezing weather. Really don't want to subject any kind of scion wood that's trying to heal to freezing temperatures that can kill the wood. After showing you that graft, I went ahead and put on the rest of the grafts. Most of these are Spanish fig varieties. And you can see that the uh, tree is really reduced to what I showed you initially um, with those grafts. I try to graft as low as possible to the junction so that you don't have competing rootstock again. Fewer chances of those sprouting out. And it also keeps all the new grafts in picking range. You can also see that I left no rootstock. Every single branch on this tree is grafted. And this is not something that I learned from anyone, just from experience, that if I don't take that off, these grafts really won't do very well. My most successful Franken figs are the ones that don't have rootstock competing. So we'll take a look at the, the new varieties on this tree. NSDC down here. This one is a Black Greek Marius. Here we've got the Capulcurt Negra. This one here is a Coldadom Roja. Of course, the uh, Colonel Littman's Black Cross we did on camera. This one here is another Colonel Littman's Black Cross. But another NDSC. This one here is another Coldadama Roja. Here we have a Coldadama Gigantina. Another Coldadama Gigantina. And this last one is another Capulcurt Negra. So as always, I'll do updates on these graphs as they take off during springtime. We'll take a look at them. I hope this video helps you out as you look at grafting your own fig trees. Don't be intimidated by it, especially with the tool. It makes it really easy, it takes the guesswork out, and also is very safe. You're not gonna cut yourself with that tool. Again, it's a little rate limiting just because you can't do every single graft with every size scion wood. It really needs to match up. But if you leave enough of your rootstock branches to pick from, you should be in good shape and find one that matches. And even if you don't find the most ideal location to graft initially, you can always change the position of your graft over time. A lot of these grafts I put on my trees is just to trail the, the fruit. So I'm not looking for the most ideal position for a graft until I really am sold on that variety and want to grow it. To so just trial a variety, I can graft it anywhere and should get at least one piece of fruit to try out to see if I'm intrigued by it and want to keep growing it. So again, it doesn't always have to be perfect. 
your graph choice, you can always move them down the road. One thing I forgot to mention on success rate is get your fig cuttings from a reliable source. You definitely want someone who is selling you a true variety. There are so many scammers out there selling fraudulent varieties. Go with someone who's trusted and known. And you know, if you can, within your area, within your state. Because if the cutting wood comes from a tree that's already acclimated to your growing area, it's gonna take off a lot better than if you're bringing it in from another region of the country. And going back to getting a quality scion, you definitely want healthy, fresh scions. I am sold out, I sold out quite a while ago in January, I only do that once a year. I do know that Figaholic sale is still slated to go on this year. He is selling his farm, so this is probably the last year you'll be able to get cuttings from Harvey at Figaholics. That's where I sourced almost all of the fig wood that I'm growing. Absolutely reliable. We'll always get lignified, true to type varieties that are free of disease and will take off for you. If you have additional questions, please post them below. Happy grafting and thanks for watching.